Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and on today's video, well, today's video is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes and I definitely want to hear about your setbacks. I know a lot of you have raced this weekend, so I definitely want to hear about those. And on today's video, I guess we're going to be talking about resilience and vulnerability, but I was really struggling to come up with something to talk to you guys about this week and I was thinking, should I just talk about my week of running, but actually my week of running was actually pretty minimal this week because I had some dental surgery. And well, I actually had a bone graft where they went in and they had to harvest some bone from this side and then kind of put a few screws in up here right on my front tooth and then jam some new bone right up there. So I knew this was coming, this wasn't a surprise. And my dentist had already told me ahead of time that you can't work out for at least a couple of days after you've had this done. And I was like, doc, fine. Thinking to myself, yeah, one day off will be enough. That'll be my rest day for the week. But it turns out that it was a little more violent, a little more extreme of an operation than I expected. And I ended up taking three days off. And that's three days off from all activity. So that really limits my week for what I can tell you guys about. And then in totally unrelated news, one of the viewers of this channel came up to me, a local guy, actually one of my friends in my neighborhood. And he said that he really appreciated my Jacksonville Marathon video the way I expressed the struggles that I was having. And while he might not have said that I was showing vulnerability, after reading this article, which I'm gonna share with you in just a minute, I realized that that's what it was. That's what was so appealing about that video. The race didn't go exactly as planned and I was vulnerable. On that day, no amount of resilience is going to overcome that vulnerability of having some GI discomfort. By the way, can you still see a little bit of swelling? If you look under here, I have some bruising right underneath my jaw here. And I was just FaceTiming with my wife and she was saying that it was kind of yellow all around here. Can you see that? Anyway, I tell you about my dental surgery to convey a little vulnerability, but mainly because that vulnerability ties into this article that I want to tell you guys about today. And I found this article in fastrunning.com. And of course, I will link to that in the show notes below. So if you want to go ahead and read the whole thing, there's a lot of citations in this article. You can go ahead and click on that. But I'm going to be giving you the old cliff notes. So if you only have a few minutes, this is going to cover what you need to know. And the article is titled, Is it always advantageous to be resilient? Oh, and bear with me for a few minutes. If you want to know about how my week went, I will be giving you a complete rundown of all my running activities in just a minute. So the article starts off with a pretty compelling quote from Serena Williams. And she says, I really think a champion is defined not by their wins, but by how they can recover when they fall. And I completely agree. And I'd be willing to bet that you do too, because it's all well and good when we meet our goals, when we work towards our goals, and then everything just falls right into place and we meet our goals. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice if that happened all the time? It would. But there is something there is something compelling. There is something satisfying in not meeting your goals and then using that as fuel to work towards eventually meeting your goals, right? So especially in running, we are, we're conditioned. We're conditioned to think that resilience is the be all and end all of everything. And arguably it is. When you are an endurance runner, it really comes down to resilience. Because let's be honest, it doesn't always, doesn't always feel good. It doesn't always feel good to get out there on the cold mornings. Maybe we're tired. Maybe we didn't get enough sleep. Maybe we went to bed too late. Maybe we're ramping up our distance for an event down the line. And we know that we have to hit these training goals. But our body's feeling tired, but we push through anyway because we're resilient. So the whole resiliency thing is really baked into everything we do. And basically resilience is a pretty positive thing. In fact, it's been attributed to several positive human traits like optimism, resourcefulness, flexibility. And these traits found in the resilient person enable people to adapt to situations as they come up. So while we are just talking about running here, it doesn't take a giant leap to attribute this to all things in life. And resilience is closely tied to human flourishing. So if you want to flourish, I know I do. Resiliency is a, is a key metric to flourishing. So let me just get down to it. I don't think that resilience and vulnerability are mutually exclusive. They can coexist. And in fact, vulnerability can lead to future resilience. And the other call says that being vulnerable is related to having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. And basically that is what we do every time we go out and race. It's resiliency and vulnerability hand in hand. And while resilience is not something that we all have, being vulnerable is something that we can all relate to. Okay, so let's talk about the positives of vulnerability. Because in our culture of resilience being king, it can kind of make it seem like, at least, that there is a cancel culture against vulnerability. We kind of disregard vulnerability because 
Everyone should be resilient. We need to be resilient in the face of everything that's getting us down, but that's not always the best way. So feeling vulnerable, being vulnerable, finding yourself vulnerable can be a positive experience and it can open up new ways of doing things, new ways of approaching a situation. We're still talking about running. So a lot of us are gonna be racing in the months coming up. Guys, we are all gonna be training hard for it. We are all gonna be putting in the hours doing our best so we can achieve these goals. But I'm telling you guys, there's gonna be some downtime. Not every one of us is going to nail our goals the first time. So basically what I'm saying is that feeling vulnerable is okay. Generally speaking, we do have a very accepting community of runners. We all understand how it goes. And I think you'll find that if you post something on Strava that expresses a little vulnerability, and I'm telling you, your friends are gonna come out of the woodwork to offer support. Maybe even more so than if you nail your goal. So runners, this is what I need from you. I need you to be supportive of all your, your running peeps because we don't all have the same running friends. Each of us has our own little network that spreads out. For you watching this, you can make a difference. It is never gonna hurt you when someone expresses vulnerability to you to pat them on the back, empathize with them and encourage them to move forward and be better than they have been before. And the same works for us personally. When we're dealing with stuff ourselves, when we don't crush our workout, when we don't run a race how we think we should, it's important to practice self-compassion and not be too self-criticizing. You know what I'm saying? Guys, we're all doing the best we can. And yes, it's important to be resilient. Our sport demands it, but it's also important to be vulnerable. And that vulnerability can lead to greater resilience. So before I tell you about my week, there is one last quote, and I really, it's very cliche to, to talk quotes, to start something and end something with a quote. If you are still in school, Ooh, I tell you, never start a paper with a quote from someone. But as I'm not in school, and this is my YouTube channel, I am going to finish this with a quote before I go on to my training. And I've been building up to it so long that I know what you're thinking, Matt, this quote better be pretty good. Vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. Truth and courage aren't always comfortable, but they're never weaknesses. And with that, I, I had a pretty good week of running. Despite those three forced days off, well, I guess two were forced days off, one day I would have taken off anyway, but I ended up having an, an okay week. I missed a workout. This was the week that I'd usually log a few more miles and I couldn't do it because of those days off, but it wasn't a wash. Started off on Monday with 10 miles, very easy. I felt good because I got a few miles in my legs and I knew that Tuesday, Tuesday I had a workout. And Tuesday afternoon I was having that bone graft surgery, so I knew I wanted to hit my workout hard because I knew I was gonna be off the next day, at least the next day. So on Tuesday, I did 10.5 miles with a fairly long warm up. Then I did three times one mile intervals with 600 meters recovery in between, and then a fairly long cool down. And by cool down, I mean I was just running at my normal easy pace. But those 10.5 miles felt pretty good. And because I knocked out that workout, I went into this operation feeling pretty good. But that feeling of pretty goodness only lasted until about uh, four, half four in the afternoon. And then I was having a considerable amount of discomfort right around this area. And that discomfort made me take off Wednesday, made me take off Thursday, made me take off Friday. By Saturday, things were feeling a little better. And I think by Saturday, I was off of all pain meds, still feeling discomfort, just not enough discomfort to actually take some pain medication. So on Saturday, I knocked out 13.3 miles, very easy. I kind of planned to end my run early if I was feeling any discomfort, but it turned out I did. And I knocked out those 13.3 miles, actually feeling pretty good. All easy, no pushing. I listened to an audiobook and everything was good. And and then on Sunday, because Saturday's run went so well and I managed to knock out those 13 miles feeling good, I decided to just run a few more. So this was my long run of the week and I knocked out about 19.2 miles, which I was very happy with. Now I was really tired when I came back. My legs were heavy, had a lot of other stuff to do around the house that day. I was pretty chuffed, pretty pleased with myself for knocking out those 19.2 miles. And that brought my week to a total of 53 miles, which is about 85 kilometers. In fact, I think it was a little over 53 miles and a little over 85 kilometers, but that's close enough. And then of course I did spend some time on the Peloton this week, but of course the Peloton, like the running, was held back because of this business. But I still managed to knock out 94.33 miles on the Peloton, which is a shade over 151 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week. All right guys, your turn. I wanna hear from you. How did your week of running go? Let me know in the comments. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.